Uh, joining us on Sports Night in our second week. Uh, now let's get stuck into it because a big issue uh, was burning along today because it's just seven weeks out from the AFL footy season and already the sport is making headlines. Today on the streets of the AFL crazy city two, the, two of the league's senior players headed up Melbourne's Gay Pride March. Now Carlton's Brock McLean and Richmond's Daniel Jackson joined the annual march through St Kilda. They marched behind amateur footballer Jason Ball who plays for the Yarra Glen Thunder. Now Ball came out to his straight teammates last year and they also turned out to support him today. It was great scenes and they're calling on the AFL to adopt a zero tolerance approach to homophobia. Uh, a great effort by all and great to see such a big crowd uh, and some sunshine for them too. Tracy, and I guess a big step in the right direction for footy and homophobia too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you think back to some of the great moments where sport does make a difference to things. And you think about Nicky Winmar back in 1993 when he lifted his shirt and said, hey, I'm black and I'm proud of it. And that was the start of, you know, trying to get past racial vilification in the game. And I guess this is the next step now. And you never actually really quite get there totally. We're still not there yet. Um, but but of course, you, you need to start somewhere, and I just think, um, you know, thumbs up to, to the boys that got out there in March today and supported each other. I think that's really important. So many great causes uh, can be rolled out and, and use, using sport, I guess, too, Annie, uh, to, to help promote it. And this, a uh, good bit of PR uh, for the AFL, too, not far out from the season, to really get people on board such a good cause as well. Something the AFL should really probably take advantage of. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic thing um, that they've done and, and that they're supporting. I um, support minority groups wholeheartedly, being a Paralympian, <laughs> so um, no, I think it's a great cause. And it's not easy, too, uh, to generate this sort of thing. And, and seeing these players, uh, like Brock McLean, who not him, he, himself is, is not homosexual, uh, he's coming out, uh, Tommy, in supporting his sister, uh, who had to hide her sexuality for so long and uh, thought for so long that it would impact negatively on his football career, which is just crazy to think. It is crazy to think. I, surely we're now at a time in society where we're basically just people, and there's differences in so many ways across so many different formats. Uh, to just focus on one person's sexuality and somehow marginalize them for that uh, just seems so logically impossible to follow. Uh, it's just time now, really. And, and, and the AFL has done some great strides in a lot of things. And uh, with football, all football clubs really being in the center of the community, almost have a responsibility to stand up uh, for all the things that make sense and say, look, you know, if it makes sense here and we can get along with it, then surely you can. And it, it flows back down from there. And I think that's a really good point, too, because I know when I first saw the story today in the Melbourne papers, and I thought, what? It's still an issue. It's yeah. 2013 and still an issue. Um, but, yeah, exactly. It's, it's kick-started now. Let's, um, let's make sure it goes all the way through. Well, it's actually quite quickly. progressive because, I mean, you know, Super Bowl coming, uh, the NFL has yet to really have a major player come out. So there's still, you know, one of the major pillars of American community uh, still hasn't really come to grips with it or recognised it. So it's, I think the AFL is really quite progressive in this. Well, let's cross live for the man at the centre of it all, uh, Blues midfielder uh, Brock McLean. Brock, uh, live in Melbourne on Sports Night this evening. Thanks for your time. Uh, firstly, just give us a bit of background to how you did get involved. We mentioned earlier, obviously, it revolves a lot around your sister. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Well, I, uh, I saw something that uh, was retweeted on Twitter probably a couple of weeks ago and... Uh, I think it was a, uh, the journalist Jill Stark for, uh, for The Age and just talking, uh, asking if there was an AFL player out there willing, you know, to put his name to such a cause and, you know, I jumped at the chance because it's something I feel so passionately about and, uh, you know, it's, uh, treating everyone equally just means a lot to me. It must have been a great sense of achievement today. Uh, the pitchers speak for themselves, great turnout for it. Uh, and you seem to be getting so much backing um, from heterosexual players in footy as well, which seems a, a big step forward. Yeah, it was great that Dan could come along and, uh, and march as well. You know, he's a, an ambassador for Headspace and, you know, suicide rates uh, amongst the gay and uh, lesbian community are quite high. So for him to throw support behind, uh, you know, something that means quite a lot to me and Jason was, uh, was very special and it went a long way to, to uh, raising a lot more awareness. Brock, when you decided to do this, did you go to um, the team and say, listen, this is what I'm planning to do. Do any of you others want to come along with me? Did you apply any pressure to try and get others to support you? Uh, no, I, I, uh, I sort of just did it myself. I never really consulted the team or, or spoke to any players. But, you know, something initially like this, I think players have got to want to do it. and They shouldn't be you know, asked or prodded. I think naturally you've got to want to do it because it actually has much more of an effect. 
So um, I'm sure a lot more players uh, feel the same way that I do. And, and now that I've spoken up and Dan's come out and marched, I think you'll start to see a lot more players voice their opinion because, uh, you know, they feel exactly the same way. Tell us about the culture in, in footy and if there is a difference between uh, the homophobia in club footy, say, compared to the AFL uh, in, the, in the big league. Is, is it an issue out there? Because when we're sitting in our armchair watching footy, uh, we see all the bells and whistles, but you're down there on the ground uh, niggling away with players out there on the field. How big an issue is it when you're out there as a player? Yeah, look, no, you certainly don't hear it from uh, any of the players or opposing teams, but you know, right through your junior footy up until you know, playing league footy now, you certainly do hear it from people in the crowd. And it's usually associated with someone that might not go in as hard or you know, might be uh, a soft or something like that. You know, they uh, associate a homosexual uh, person with that. So it's completely wrong. And I think uh, the AFL and even society just need to take a zero tolerance approach to it. And anyone caught you know, yelling homophobic rants or you know, right from grassroots level to AFL level just needs to be uh, you know, given us a pretty severe penalty. What about the response, Brock, from the AFL itself? I know Andrew Dimitriou, the CEO, couldn't be there for this occasion. Uh, were they represented today? And what's the reaction been from the AFL? I know there's been a big push to have a, a gay pride round too in the regular home and away season. Look, the AFL have done some great things with you know, racism and respect and responsibility towards women. So I'm sure there's no reason why they can't get you know, behind such a great cause like this. And, um, you know, we have Matt Finnis down there today, who's the president of the, uh, the AFLPA, so he threw his hat behind, uh, you know, behind the, uh, or threw his weight behind the cause, I should say. Um, you know, the Coaches Association wrote Jason a letter, Brendan Gale from Richmond wrote Richmond a letter, so uh, there seems to be more and more organisations and clubs and people coming out and supporting, uh, you know, the no to, homo no to homophobia cause, and um, hopefully this, just, this is just the start of something big. Brock, how do you measure your own success when you um, hop onto something like this and you decide this is what I'm going to support, I'm going to make this my issue? Uh, because it's so difficult to move something along, isn't it? To take it more, more than just being symbolic and, and just being a statement to actually making some real differences. How are you going to, to measure that? I think it's just by, you know, the more people talk about it and uh, the more people that take their head out of the sand, you know, it's, it's been such a taboo subject for so long and, uh, you know, as, as I've said a number of times, the more awareness we can create and the, the more we can get people talking about it and I think one of the great things about the uh, generation today is kids are so open-minded and we've really got an opportunity to sort of lead the way and, and show probably the older generation who are still living in the dark times and, and you know, still a lot of people have that bigot sort of attitude that, you know, uh, today's generation can really teach them and lead the way in, in you know, something uh, like uh, homophobia in sports and in society in general. Uh, Brock McLean, we appreciate your time on Sports Night tonight. I know you've got a hot foot it. Uh, and obviously, you're in the middle of pre-season training and Jason Bull's standing by uh, for us to have a chat with him. Uh, so get back to that training. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, we'll, of course, try and catch up with you throughout the year on Sports Night. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Brock McLean there, join us. Uh, look, when you think about it, uh, Ellie, Ellie, his sister, who, of course, uh, was hiding his sexual, her sexuality, and he, I mean, how hard that must have been. And for Brock to actually step up, to their cause uh, and, and represent it as a straight footy player says a lot about the man too, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's wonderful and I think it's one of the things, I mean, particularly um, as a Paralympian, you know what it's like to be different, to having a disability and um, for Jason, I think, for that to be recognised that it's a non-issue, I mean, first and foremost, any kind of sport is purely about elite competition. I think for, for me, being a disabled person, I found that it was incredibly different this time in London they really there was a huge amount of support for the Paralympics and there was you know w there were no pity stories or anything it was purely about elite sport and that's exactly how it should be seen with the AFL with the sorry with the AFL it's no no different but it is a really good point I think in that the crowds are always going to yell things at the players and I think it's time for the crowd to really raise its game I, I think all of you need to have a hard look at yourself when you're in the <laughs> arena and yell out some things that that maybe make players better people. <laughs> Don't just denigrate them for things we've always denigrated them. Get the things out they need to know, like, when you bake bread, use ingredients at room temperature. <laughs> really bring it back around to things that make sense. Some very good advice. Thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, let's bring in Jason Ball, uh, live from Melbourne now. Uh, he, of course, plays for the Yarra Glen Thunder club footy team. Jason, thank you for your time. I imagine uh, you had goosebumps today walking the streets of St Kilda. Yeah, mate, it felt like I was walking on a cloud. Um, leading the parade was quite an honour. It would, would have been pretty hard to wipe the smile off my face. Uh, progress obviously been made. Uh, how much do you think you've achieved so far and how much more 
would you like to, to, to milk from this situation and make it uh, an annual event, get a gay pride round going in the AFL? You must have a big to-do list. Yeah, look, it's been great to see the AFL play the No to Homophobia ads during the preliminary finals last year, but as you said, there is still a long way to go. I think today the stand that Brock and Dan have taken really have changed things though. You know, they've really broken that silence from within the AFL playing group and I think hopefully they've given permission for more people within the AFL and in society broadly who are straight to come out to support, you know, the, the call to stamp out homophobia in the game. Jason, tell us a little bit about your story because it couldn't have been easy uh, first of all, rocking up to a footy club and I guess addressing it. Did you address it? Did you just wait to let people find out naturally? I mean, I don't know. What did you go through? Well, look, it, it was pretty tough early on when I first realised that I was gay and living in, in, in that, deeply embedded in that footy community. Uh, the footy club felt like the one place that I'd never be able to come out. You know, I was able to come out to my family and friends, but homophobic slurs are sort of a regular part of the games and training and that kind of language makes you feel like you're not going to be welcomed. Like, I feared that I, if, if I came out, I would be bullied, I would be ostracised, I'd be kicked out of the club because I had nothing else to go upon. I had no examples to draw upon. I didn't know of any gay football players. I didn't know that it could be better. Uh, Jason, uh, is it a regular occurrence to, to know and maybe perhaps you've even spoken to some AFL players and some club footy players who are hiding their sexuality? Obviously, you know it is happening. Are you finding that some players are even coming to you to talk about it and discuss it? I've had many players at various levels of the game get in touch since I launched the campaign and, and one of the most heartbreaking things I've heard of people who stopped playing the game at one point or another because they couldn't handle the homophobic culture. Um, but I think part of you know, what I'm really pushing for is not so much calling on players to come out of the closet because I understand what they're going through. It's not a pleasant experience. I remember always second-guessing everything that I ever said or did out of fear that the guys would figure out that I was gay. Um, so what we really want to see, what I would like to see, is the AFL take a leadership position on this, really own the issue so that gay players and supporters know that if they do come out, the AFL is going to have their back. I guess uh, in the end it'll come to a point, hopefully in your eyes, it sounds like there'll be no need to have these sort of uh, occurrences like today to bring attention to it because it will just be what's done. Is that the hope in the end? Absolutely, mate. That's how it should be. And within my club at Yarra Glen, that's sort of how it is. I mean, the boys, I think the real heroes of my story today are my teammates who marched with me on Pride. And, you know, to them, they're kind of bemused by this whole situation because I'm just Jason. I'm just one of their mates. They don't really view me as gay, but they're more than happy to get out there and, and lend support because I'm one of their mates and they, I know that they've got my back. Jason, what was the catalyst um, for you starting this movement? Did you go to your friends at the footy club and talk to them first and they supported you so you decided this was something you wanted to do? Or how did it, how did it all come about? Well, look, in a football being a team sport, it's not like, you know, Daniel Kowalski in swimming or Matthew Mitchum in diving, which are individual sports. Playing a team game, I had to take that into consideration, I think, when I wanted to take the stand that I did. And so I, I didn't want to politicise the club. I didn't want to distract from playing footy, which I feel is the most important thing. Um, but I went to the club and I said, look, this opportunity has come up. I spoke to the coach. I spoke to the president of the club. I said, what do you think? And, and to my surprise, they told me to go for it. They said, you know, we know this is something you believe in passionately. We know you can handle it. Uh, and that meant a lot to me. And, and that was really the catalyst. And, and, you know, I wouldn't have been able to stand up and, and take the stand that I have done if it wasn't for their support. Well, Jason Ball, we really appreciate your time and uh, what a special day it was uh, for you today and we're glad you enjoyed it and congratulations on this push you're doing and I know there's a lot more you still want to ch achieve but so far congratulations. Thanks guys, thanks for having me on. Jason Ball of course plays uh, with the Yarra Glen Thunder um, in club footy in Victoria and uh, a great uh, deal of respect to uh, both Jason and of course Brock McLean uh, who's out there pushing the cause. Uh, now something else we want